Hey, Joe. How you doing? Hey. Uh, yeah, good hey. to see you again. Yeah, yeah. since yeah. Texas. Yeah, so how are you doing? Uh, it's really hot still in Texas. Nothing's changed other than, you know, projects, but it's still hotter than hell. Yeah, hotter than hell. That's a great segue mm -hmm. for the thing we want to talk to you about, which is you recently posted a video on uh, uh, your Vimeo channel, and you made an Indiegogo for The Torture, right? Do you want to tell us a little bit about the project? Yes, The Torture is uh, written by Paul Kane, who did Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell, and he did Hellraiser and their legacy. And uh, he just came, he's coming out with a new book right now called uh, More Monsters, which is a series of shorts. But we did um, uh, the box is actually downstairs. We did a video for a company called uh, configurationboxes.com uh, for Derek Neal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a red box, red configuration box that uh, was designed for Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell. And we had already been doing boxes for Max Lichter from a pyramid gallery. Right. And uh, uh, Kane got, he, st he saw the video eventually. And uh, I get, he liked the titles a lot. I remember that tweet. And then uh, he sent me a, twi a tweet talking about short films, and uh, he sent us this one script called The Torturer, which was a short story from a book called Nail Biters. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and uh, he told me that it, they were currently working on turning it into a comic book uh, illustrated by uh, Ian Simmons. Oh, cool. And uh, so we optioned the rights, the filming rights for this script. And right before we started this uh, Skype, I got um, – we just finished having a production meeting with a guy named uh, Matt Ash, who awesome. did uh, the special effects uh, and messed up torture, blood and guts effects for a movie called Circus of the Dead. He okay, also, cool. He also worked on another film called Sacrament. He's mm -hmm. highly recommended, probably uh, – from what it sounds like, he's very sought after. He's like the best in town, best in Texas when it comes to, you know, horror movies. And uh, so, yeah, he's really interested in doing this. So now we just you know, got to keep the lasso on him. That sounds very promising. And, of course, you know, uh, for those who don't know, Paul Kane is the shadow writer. And um, so, yeah, we, we loved uh, all the stuff that, that he's written lately. And, and we've actually reviewed some of his books on the podcast and uh, so I'm looking forward to that more monsters. I haven't really read the uh, nail biters yet, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna save that for after I watch the torturer, oh, so I don't spoil right. myself. Yeah. Oh, you read it? Oh man, dude. Uh, I the script is awesome. It's brutal. Yeah. Uh, and I had to. I, I was wanting to get deeper into the deeper into the story. Uh, just, I was afraid I wasn't understanding it a lot of things properly. So I went ahead and I, I read uh, the short story from Nail Biters, and it's really cool, you know, reading the script, reading the the, the short story, and it, it's the same point of view, but at the same time, it feels different. And I feel like there's a lot of stuff in the book that I mean, it clearly won't translate to screen. Uh, right without uh you know just because it's a lot of um a lot of deep thought with uh your main character that you follow andy brooks mm -hmm. and uh in the script you really don't get that but you it, you do get a lot more um so the visuals man like i said i'm so happy that we had that meeting with matthew ash he's it's gonna be man i keep saying it's gonna be brutal and uh paul paul taylor um man he's stoked he's pumped yeah, uh, I'll, I'll bet. Yeah, he's gonna, That's have, he's gonna have a hard time acting now that you've peeled his eyes out. <laughs> oh. oh man, now we'll, yeah. we'll put some prosthetics in there. Some, some <laughs> okay, <laughs> that that was a, a a very witty and and tremendously like fascinating uh, uh, video for the Indiegogo. Which uh, I'm gonna say the 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 URL for the Indiegogo is indiegogocom slash projects slash the dash torture dash film dash horror dash drama so that's that's the 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 url which we're going to put in the show notes for the indiegogo fundraiser and you got some really cool perks here i mean uh 
you know, you can see a digital copy of the film for $5. You can see, uh, you can receive an autograph promo card for $10. And there's already, some of these were claimed already. And uh, for $25, you can get a torture movie patch. Uh, $50 gets you a thank you in the credits. And then it goes all the way up to uh, $5,000 for the walk-on extra. Uh, you've got two spots ready for this. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. That would be tremendous oh, if yeah. someone goes up to... To five thousand, right? Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be pretty amazing. That's that would be a, I mean, with the five thousand dollar one, I think you get a, a producer's credit also, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's a pretty big deal. Um, oh yeah. Well, the the with with those kind of uh, when people donate that much, they can um, they get put up closer to the camera. They'll be First and foremost, they'll have the best makeup because uh, this script is going to it, it, uh, I, I don't want to give anything away about the story unless, you know, some people that have read it. Of course. It. Of course. But, yeah. Uh, there are some. I mean, because you have Andy Brooks who gets the shit beaten out of him. Sorry. <laughs> he gets He's a tortured, of course. He's terribly tortured. I'm going to guess, because I've seen some of the uh, makeup effects that you were trying out on your Facebook page, and one of them involved a, a hand, and the hand had, like, pins stuck through his uh, the nails, and it's, like, it's a horrible torture yeah. that I guess we've we've read about this sort of torture in, like, Central yeah. America, you know, dictators that would do that to people, and they just stick, like, little pieces of bamboo up their nails, and it, yeah. it's a horrifying thing, oh, but, uh yeah. So you got you got your Vimeo channel. It's uh, Vimeo.com slash Little Spark Films, where you have all those like book trailers and stuff that you made, right? Uh, well, I guess the I mean it really. On, I'm be real, man. Uh, the box really wasn't meant to promote the book. I mean, yeah, it'd promote the book. The book is awesome. Holy crap, Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell. Yeah, it's yeah. golfing, and you don't want to finish it. It's so good. Holy crap, it was a great book, and. Uh, you know, I, I hit up Derek, and I'm like, dude, you know, this is a, I mean, I was excited when I realized that the red box was for that book. I just thought, you know, when I first met Pyramid Gallery and, and Configuration Boxes, I thought, you know, I, 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 I thought I knew Hellraiser. <laughs> and then uh, I started, you know, like this this one that I, I started, the, the Lost oh, Configuration. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the Love Configuration yeah, or the Innocence box. Configuration. I think that Barbie Wilde helped design that one, right? Yeah, it was yeah. Anna Lavat. Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, Lavat. And yeah. then you know, I, and then going digging through the websites and learning all the the mythos that they've created for all these boxes is just mind boggling. It's insane. And then you know, learning about Jihad. And then we had the Midian configuration. We took that downstairs during our production meeting because uh, that's another box we're going to be doing a video for maybe uh, hopefully oh, this cool. year. And, well, uh, I, I don't think I've heard of that one yet. I, I feel like I'm 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 missing out. Oh, I, the Midian configuration. Yeah. I think he. I think uh, was it Derek Neal designed that one? Yeah. Well, no, yeah. Uh, it was oh. a contest he did. It, it was, was what? A contest. Oh, it, it, okay. Yeah, it was a contest Derek held uh, for the Midian configuration, and um, uh, I forgot who it was that won that that contest, and he ended up making that design, and uh, it's the Midian configuration. Uh, when the, the Nightbreed and the Cenobites go to war, it's the uh, I guess it's, it's supposed to be the box that Boone creates uh, or Cabal makes. Right, right, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, I I got to look into that because I I honestly have I, it totally passed me by. But now that you mention it, I'm gonna go right after this and try to figure out what Derek Neal has on his page in configuration boxes. Oh, he's got, um, he's, got he's got a good handful of awesome stuff. I want to make. I want to make videos for all the boxes, but at the same time, I know that, you know, they only tend to keep the, the really popular ones in production unless, you know, Steam picks up on others. And that's what we wanted to do with these companies. And that's why we did um, the Red Box, the Servants configuration. And, you know, I read the book and then I talked to, I talked to Derek. I was kind of nervous to talk to Derek because I didn't know him. I knew Max. Mm -hmm. and uh, He was all about it. He sent us a box and uh, I found my Sherlock Holmes. Uh, his name is Ian, also, and uh, he did the music too for the for the commercial, and it was really mainly to promote the box and uh, to help you know push push the brands, and uh, I couldn't 
really I had to recreate the artwork for the cover. I really didn't like the the type on the cover either. So I right, just right. did my own little I put my own little spark on it. And um your little spark. <laughs> Kane, Kane liked it and uh yeah, and next thing I knew uh we optioned the rights for the torture. Awesome. It was re it was really awesome. And you got Paul T Taylor of course who's like pinhead in judgment and uh <laughs> that, he he actually hams it up a little bit in the Indiegogo video, and he talks about my sweet suffering. <laughs> of course, a line from uh, from Pinhead from the Hellraiser movies. So, wow, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I mean, when when you opened the door in your Indiegogo video, I thought that you're going to be the torturer. So I don't know if if that's accurate or not, but no, I'm not going to be the torturer. <laughs> no, you're not going to be the torturer. You're just going to be behind the camera, not in front of it. Yeah, Got it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing all the storyboards. I'm doing the directing. Uh, you know, I got my shot lit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm basically a one, my wife and I, Catalina and I are basically the crew mm -hmm. doing all this pre-production work and, uh, you know, pulling names, getting people together. And so far, every meeting we've had with people, they are ecstatic about this. Oh yeah. They mm -hmm. are full tilt boogie. They want to help promote it. They want to help, you know, be in it. They want to. Dude, it's just insane. Like, out of all the projects we've ever done, you know, this one is just like, you know, it, it's it's like, you know, that that song from the Muppet movie with Kermit and Fozzie. We're just moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be brutal. It's going to yeah. be brutal. And so, gonna, wow. This is, is going to be, I think, everything we ever made tends to be funny in some way. And... The, this is this is going to be the first. I, I mean, we never intend for it to be. It just happens. So this is going to be the first time where I think uh, this is going to be a really stressful shoot. It's going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my hardest not to make it comical. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Because I you've proven gonna... that you can do both. I guess you, I've seen the the one you did over in Texas at the time of the Texas Frightmare Weekend. The silly dilly why so killy. Oh. That's <laughs> dildo of the dead. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have experience with doing like 48-hour movies and stuff like that, right? Which is, you know, you guys got to keep it going and, you know, edit it really quickly and all that. So you have to have great skills to be able to make a movie in 48 hours, even if it's a short film. Uh, well, yeah, very much so. I mean, with a 48-hour film race, there's only so much prepping you can do because you don't know what you're making until you are at the meetup and you see all these other teams like, uh, you know, you get there, you're thinking, holy, it's just going to be us and maybe two other teams. Mm -hmm. you got the crew of actors and, you know, people behind the scenes. Uh, some people keep it short. Uh, I think our last team we did was, like, almost 20 people plus. And everyone was pumped about it. And we weren't going to do it until uh, the guys running the film race said that, you know, it's potential to be on Troma now, which is an online streaming service for Troma film. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, oh, we got to do it. And of course we uh i got my crew together and i just like, I, I don't know what we're gonna make you know this guy he has stilts and he's satan here's a bunch of burlesque dancers and <laughs> right. and bailed on me like the night before because they thought you know i was gonna make a film and like i had like three hours and I, they were only gonna let me use a hallway with all these neons and i was so pissed off about that and i was able to score um uh, a rehearsal studio. Uh, when I, when Catalina and I were in a band called Aristoscat, we used to practice at this space called Pro Rehearsal, and only like metal bands play there, like you know Drowning Pool, like Drowning mm -hmm. Pool mm -hmm. plays there and stuff. And uh, I, I you know went to high school with the guy who owns the place and then some of the bands I went there, and they were all about it, like yeah, let's do this. And um, I got a whole sound team from here in Arlington called the Common House Collective. That was like. 10 guys on my sound what the nice. hell <laughs> uh, i got a camera operator from uh uh channel eight mm -hmm. uh, or like a wf like a, he works for abc camera operator and um then uh we drew zombie on our last film like the year before we got road trip the year before that uh we got grindhouse and the year before that we got uh horror like just plain horror this right, year right. last year we got zombie and by the time and we knocked it out, we did. We shot. Uh, I wrote it, shot it, edited it, and uh, submitted it all in 48 hours. And it's a seven-minute film, and it's really dense. And it's really like 
the content matter is really depressing, but when you do something like that, you can't really sit down and think about, you know, your dialogue or what you're going to make. You just write a general BS Outline. script of, like, the general direction we're going. This right. is a general idea of what they're saying. And these are the general shots that I want. So and you have, to, and like, when you do that, you really just have to let, you know, trust that your crew is working. Right, right. And you guys started out making music videos mainly, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I hated the videos that my the guys making for my band were coming out. I hated the way they were. So I started making my own music videos. Yeah. And then other people started paying me to make their music videos. <laughs> That's cool. And I'm still making people's music videos. <laughs> so. I got your IMDb page open right here, and I want to ask you a few questions. Is it true that your nickname is Astro? Oh, shit. <laughs> is that uh, something you haven't heard in a while? Um. Yeah, that was my when I when I was in high school, in junior high, I was in a metal band called Primitive Return. Okay. We all had, uh, we all had our own nicknames, you know, like Corn. You know. Okay. You no, know, I was I was Astro. And it's on your IMDb page. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that out that White Zombie album, Astro Creep 2000. Oh yeah, one of the best ones. Yeah, really enjoy that one. That was my gateway into Rob Zombie. Um, I guess it was that true for a lot of people. Oh, so, yeah. hey, you know, the, the torture. Um, yeah, I'm going to definitely back this one up. And yeah. uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with this with this uh, feature. And uh, I'm going to save the Nail Biters book for after this movie gets made because okay. well, I don't want to get spoiled. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, we're going to try our best. To, I mean, we, wanted, we were talking to Matthew uh the fx guy and you know we want to shoot in september and he's like honestly november works best october is a nightmare for if i don't know about the rest of america but here in dallas october is a freaking nightmare you know my whole crew my whole group of people that we work with you know they're you know that's when all the shows are happening you know that's because right. we're, we're all you know i guess freaks hey and, you know the best kind <laughs> That's when you know all our all we get to do all our projects like crazy. I mean, we're we're like this all year round, right? Doing horror That's and cool. stuff. But I mean, October is when you know the normal people let us play with them, and right. um, so. But November, I think it sounds like we're pushing the shoot back to November, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know that it's going to be cooler a little bit down here, even though it's a hundred degrees still, and even Christmas it's still hot. Jeez. And then, um, so yeah, I mean, we're just gonna, it's, we're, we'll try to edit it. I want, we wanted to have it ready for next Frightmare, but let's, I mean, to be completely honest, you know, editing it, nitpicking it, doing the audio, doing the, um, doing, uh, you know, maybe touch up on color, uh, color grading. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there's, uh, the score, which won't even really be music. At, it's going to be like, you know, just, just a lot of audio work ambience lots of audio work and then on top of that um it, it sounds like we're gonna have to have a pretty heavy duty digital effect inside the the, the short film uh -huh. which is cool i have a i have a phone call uh soon with a, a, a artist from a uh, real effects so i'm gonna talk to him see what he can do see how that works out see how my budget works out see how much we can raise and you know, keep going from there. We just keep on trucking. Awesome. Is Catalina going to edit it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we both are. She's going to do the primary editing. Okay. Um, and nitpick. And then, you know, we'll duke it out. And <laughs> all, right. all right. It's going to be brutal. That's that's all yeah. I've taken out of this is it's going to be brutal. And it's going to have Paul T. Taylor. And, hey, you know, October or November, it's just going to add to the discomfort of Paul T. Taylor's character, I guess. Uh -huh. You know? And like I, Paul is great. He is he uh, he's primarily a theater actor. Uh -huh. He does a lot of stage plays. He's always acting. He you know and I'm not saying he just takes whatever gig gets thrown at him. He's he does a lot of stage plays. Um, oh yeah, he was in Sin City. He was in Super, and he was of course in Hellraiser Judgment. And there's another movie coming out where he plays a creepy uncle. So you know there's all sorts of like work that he's done. Sick for toys. Yeah. That's what that one's called. The guy that directed that film was also in another James Gunn movie, uh, The Belko Experiment. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a really cool film. Yeah. Yeah, he was in the Belko experiment. Um, he was a real flamboyant uh, cubicle guy worker. He looked a uh, mm-hmm. lat, but he that that actor directed Sick for Toys. Mm. Um, and then I think you know Paul did a Christmas play. He did two Christmas plays. Like he was going back and forth all last December, and uh, I think he's got another one coming up. I don't remember. I feel bad for not remembering. I want to go see another play. That's okay. <laughs> it's late there. It's kind of late over there. But it seems like, Joe, you got quality and talent all over the board for this project. So I can't wait to see how this Indiegogo does. When is it? How long is it going to go for? Two months. That's Two months. The, I think that's the maximum that Indiegogo allows. So I feel bad. Like the last time I did a campaign was when I was releasing our album. Uh, for our band, Arista Scat, is called uh, Musico Pandemonium. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, we shot. We got five music, six music videos. It's on. The, it's on YouTube. Mm. Uh, Arista Scat. If you want to watch that nonsense, okay. I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but man, there's fireworks going on out here. Wow. Oh wow. wow there's a, little, a lot. A little early. Oh, dude, it's there's <laughs> fireworks going on all the time over here. But um, anyway, what was I saying, Paul? Oh, oh we're talking can- about uh, Pandemonium, uh, your band, and uh, it was yeah, on that YouTube. Was time, that was the last time I ran a campaign, um, and you know I made it by the skin of my teeth, and it was it was small, but at the same time, I, you know I didn't I didn't know what went into it, and you know we've donated to a lot of campaigns uh, within the past couple of years to you know. Uh, a band, you know, some bands, uh, some other filmmakers, Gore Noir, we donated to them. They were, you know, they, they do uh, the horror magazines. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully, you know, good karma comes back. And But, man, I remember getting spammed like crazy. It's just like, like man, this is what goes into going, doing a campaign is, you know, you know, putting yourself out there. Yeah, you got to go find the subreddits and you got to find the communities out there. You got to... Post your link around those places and, you know, try to get as many eyes on it as possible. Get We're going to do our part yeah. to share all that, all the links. So, yeah. Get the yeah. Hellraiser Judgment Promotions people involved because they. Oh, yeah. Oh, they already are. Oh, They're on the case. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're on the case. Yeah. Just like the, the Barker cast is on the case. So. Right, right. Hey, Joe, thanks so much for talking to us tonight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we love you and love your work. So. It's going to be brutal. <laughs> We're yes. going to see. Let's <laughs> let's share this. Let's look forward to seeing the torture uh, maybe in 2019. So, uh, yeah, let's – all the best, man. All the best. Oh, dude. All right. I mean, we're not stop till it's 100% perfect. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, can... we're looking forward to it. All right. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Later, guys.